that a new piercing? I heard that getting your umbilicus pierced is like super painful. And I've gotta say, your ocular regions are looking stunning today. What's up everybody, I'm Patrick Kelly and today we are talking about the language of anatomy. Because yeah, you can get through life with just neck, back, ears and all that, but if you wanna do some real anatomy, you need some new words, some new, complicated words. But anatomists are boring. So once you get a handful of regions down, you can start throwing together really intuitive combinations of all of them, no problem. But it does take some memorization. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you my tricks and tips for memorizing the different regions of the body. So here we go from the top down, starting with the cranial region, the superior part of the skull. You ever played this game? Cranium, it's a brain. Next is the occipital, the posterior part of the skull. Personally, I sleep on my back, so I have to occiput this region on my pillow. Hey, embrace the dad jokes now, it'll make the memory stick. The buccal regions are your cheeks, and you know what you put in those? Bugles, bagels, boca burgers, and your bugles. Oral, that relates to anything with the mouth. You can't say the word oral without making an O. The otic region is your ear, and I remember this one because I never knew what the word sounded like. Is it otic, is it otic, am I completely mispronouncing it? Either way, I remembered it because I didn't know what it sounded like. The orbital or the ocular region relates to your eyes. You know how you roll your eyes whenever your teacher assigns you homework? Well, it's kind of like your eyes are orbiting around in your head. Nasal, it's your nose, this one's easy. Frontal, also not surprising, it's your forehead, the front of your skull. That's it for your head, moving down lower. That was dumb. The cervical region is all of your neck, and you gotta twist your neck to do this. Surf's up, dude! Get it, serve, like cervical. Side note, this is one of the anatomical terms that I learned early on, so I thought from a young age that cervical cancer meant cancer of the neck, and boy was I wrong. Thoracic region means the upper body, but it can also refer to the 12 vertebrae of the upper back. Easiest way to remember it is that Thor is super buff in the chest and back region, and you can't spell thoracic without Thor. Scapular is the shoulder blade region. To me, scap kind of sounds like stab, and how are you gonna stab something? With a shoulder blade, obviously. Dorsal means the upper back between the two shoulder blades, just like the dorsal fin on a whale. And costal means your rib cage area. And you know that I will go for ribs no matter the cost. I'm confused. It's a simple question, doctor. Would you eat the moon if it were made of ribs? The high quality educational content. The sternal region is the center of your chest, right where your sternum is. And for this one, I think of a hyper masculine guy with a stern look on his face who's beating his chest like right here. That hurt way more than I thought it would. Pectoral and mammary both kind of mean the same thing. They mean breast or chest. This one's pretty easy to remember. It's got the word mama in it and like, look, I'm not gonna spell it out for you. You can do this one, but fair warning. You have to remember that biosex women still have pectoralis muscles and biosex men still have nipples. So as far as which term you wanna use, just whatever your teacher says. The axillary regions are your armpits. Axillary and armpit, they both start with A. That's my memory device. You can also remember that if the upper body were an A, that's right where the crossbar would go. The brachial region is for your upper arm, and it's those big brachial muscles that help you break things. Also, can we just rename arm wrestling to brachial battles? That would make the anatomy nerd in me so happy. The antibrachial region is just used for the forearm, Super creative, I know. But the term cubital also means forearm. And that's because there was an old unit of measure, the cubit, that was one forearm long. The antecubital region is on the inside of the elbow. Look, I know anatomists aren't super creative, live with it. The carpal region is the area of your wrist and proximal hand. And how are you gonna drive a car? With your hands. The polex is your thumb. And how are you gonna vote in this poll, yay? or nay. Finally, for the hand, we have the digit region. And that's your fingers, but it's also your toes down on your feet. And hey, you gotta use these digits to enter in these digits. I guess you could just dictate, but that doesn't work with memory device. The abdominal region is everything from your waist to your thorax. It's not just the abs. I'm not gonna give you another shirtless Chris Hemsworth. You already got one. The lumbar is the lower back. Both start with L, easy enough. The gluteal region, it's the butt. This is the one you already knew. The femoral region is the thigh region, named after the femur, which is the big bone in the thigh. Teller region is the front of the knee, where that kneecap is, that patella, ella, ella. The popliteal region is the back of the knee, appropriately named because you can hold exactly one Pop-Tart back there. And I know what you're thinking, Patrick, that's not a practical place to store Pop-Tarts. I wanna let you know, I hear you, and I politely reject your negativity. Next term, the cruel region means your shins. I remember this one because there's this giant lumberjack statue in my hometown, and he has enormous shins, and he probably lives in a rural area, which 
rhymes with crural. Your surer region are your calf muscles. And I always remember this one because I think of a super excited little kid who uses their calf muscles to stand on their tippy toes when they go, sure. The tarsal region at the top of the foot kind of getting in toward the ankle area. You ever heard of the Carolina tar heels? Well, I don't want you to start thinking that it's the heel. It's the top of the foot, completely different. The foot itself is the pedal region. And you can just think of that prefix for ped or pod. Anytime you hear podiatrist, pediatrician, bipedal, if it has that prefix, we're usually thinking about feet. Or if you're like me, you need your feet so that you can pedal a bicycle. Your hallux is your big toe. And you know how you walk through the hall in the middle of the night? on your tippy toes. And then the plantar region is the bottom of your foot. Because every time you walk, you're planting your foot on the ground. Now remember, there are plenty more terms than just these, especially when we start getting into the tuberosities and the really specific sites on the body. But these will be enough to get you started. And again, if you want some practice, check out the description for a Google slideshow I put together for you to give you a good quiz. And if you wanna learn more about the language of anatomy, check out this video I put together on the directional terms for the body. It goes hand in hand or carpal and carpal with this video. And if this video helps you out, take those phalanges and press that subscribe button right there. I really appreciate it when you do. It's how I get to sleep at night. So have fun, be good, and I'll see you next time.